I think the shortest summary, of course, is that we see uh, today um, it's possible to do new planning and involve these international agreements. Uh, we see it's feasible uh, to bring this thinking of value into practice. Uh, it happens already, we can see this, but we also saw there's still a way to go. And um, I think I'm very happy also, I go into more detail with some of my notes, what I, what I heard, but what I liked, of course, working for the Royal Institute of Dutch Architects and being an architect myself, I think that architects, they have a special role in this process. And that was mentioned also by a couple of experts. They, um, it's not only architects on designers, of course, we heard that too, it's clients, uh, private uh, clients, it's government parties, the bureaucracy as it was uh, named uh, before. Um, they are, these are involved also, and they are necessary partners and stakeholders when it comes to this uh, process. Um, so I think within architecture, there, there is a couple of aspects which helps. It's a creative uh, group of people. It's about how solving problems. It's coming with new solutions. So it's different as we heard also today from alpha uh, scientists uh, who have exact results to exact problems, but it's different in architecture. And it, it inv involves uh, image and imagination. And what we also learned with uh, BNA in the past is that people are willing to create other values, uh, uh, economic values, social values, and many others we've heard of here today in this conference. And we, we did this also, we did an exercise at the Expo Real, which is a real estate fair in Munich, uh, one of the biggest in Europe. And we asked architects and clients to talk about their projects, but in the meaning of the social, ecologic and economic value. And they tried hard and they will try much harder in the future, I think, because it's a new vocabulary, which we are not yet used. Maybe the social value is very clearly, but it is not expressed or focused upon. So thinking in these different uh, dimensions of values, the Brundtland criteria, as we all know them, I think is, uh, is very important and possible. And I'm, I, I'm thankful for your remark, I think, Caroline, was that uh, there's not many parties do, dealing with the SDGs yet, you said, if I may quote that way. And we did in February, we did an, um, with BNI International uh, Make Happen Inspiration Conference focusing entirely on the SDGs. And we did some research also with our friends from the Royal Institute of British Architects. And there is a couple of SDGs where, of course, sustainable cities being one architects really can make a difference and can contribute to these SDGs. Probably will not help hunger out of the world, but many others uh, of these SDGs are part of uh, the work we do. And I think which is also interesting when it comes to different forms of value is what we do with the BNA Onderzoek. And of course, uh, Vereniging Delta Metropole knows BNA Onderzoek very well, BNA Research in uh, Dutch. And that's, uh, I'm involved a lot in European collaboration and that's something which is very unique to Holland. It's an initiative where architects, clients, uh, stakeholders are involved to define the the objective, the task, to design the design task before actually giving away a design task. So you have, when it comes to the uh, city of the future, how to treat a building as a water machine, how to develop a, a multi-purpose nodes uh, in the area of Amsterdam, to be in conversation with each other and define actually what is at stake, what is the task we are looking at, and what are the values that we would like to achieve. And then comes the design. So that's all pre-design and pre-concurrent and you meet each other. And I think Philip said that also, and, and you meet each other on the values you're looking forward, uh, not so much the interest. So what we learned so far, I would like to share is first of all, that you should define, of course, what you would like to achieve, what values would you like to achieve? And then, of course, you execute it and you, uh, you plan, you make the planning, maybe you execute the building. But then, and then we come also to what we have heard from Severin and also from uh, Niels um, and from uh, Building Holland and other companies. You have to document actually what you're doing. And maybe I understand Flip completely. It's worrying to see tables with 200 indicators, but still it's necessary in such a way or a different way 
to monitor actually what you are doing. I, do you stick to your uh, uh, ambition when you win a tender uh, promising that you will improve biodiversity and nobody will look later if you ever do it? So it, 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 you have to monitor what you're doing and agree on how to, it, what is the task, what is the objective, what value are you looking for, and how can you measure it? And some are very difficult to measure and some are easier to measure. And you have to think about and, and make agreements uh, about them. And then you will hopefully avoid what Caroline, what you told us that the grass has been mowed, uh, fe uh, the, the food forest has been mowed 55 times because you agreed on the ambition, but you did not agree on the monitoring and on the practice. And that's an important part. So when I look at the first part of our conference, when we talked about the role and purpose, I think what I wrote down and which is important, there's a difference, Flip said that, between interest and value. And you can meet on the mutual value and then you come and set the second or third steps. I think that's very good. I like the paradox, Carolyn, you, you pointed out that some people think, I have so many problems at home, I cannot look into international agreements. And I don't know if you, it was you or somebody else who said, you have to go international, you have to go to the world, otherwise the world comes to you. And it's probably, I would add, not the way you want it. Maybe it's a landslide coming down or a glacier falling on your head or something like that, monsoon rain drowning your cities. And then I think the most beautiful quote, and if I would make a little report on this conference, uh, as working for the Royal Institute of Dutch Architects, I wrote down, the marriage between research and policy can only be solved if design joins in. So that looks like a very new form of marriage actually with these three roles, but uh, I think we should be open for it. And I would like to ask, uh, to add what Terry said from Groningen, knowing does not lead to acting, design does. And I'm not sure if he, he made this uh, quote himself, but I love it. And uh, we experience this also when we work with BNA on the soup, when we develop scenarios, when we come with design proposal, not complete solutions, but different solutions, different options. When you come into contact, you talk, you come into movement. So when I look at the second part of this conference where we talked about the values, I liked a lot what uh, Marcia said. She said, values, what does that mean? And that's a very crucial question. And we heard of our experts of a couple of principal values, like shit, in a capitalistic system, the long-term solution, the sustainable solution might not be the most attractive one. So there's an implicit call for looking at it differently than from a capitalistic point of view. We had the aspect of data. We need the data, we want to know it. But who's that? So the ownership of data is a value. Who owns it and how can we use it? Then we heard about a couple of process values. I liked a lot what Martina says from Delft. The legislation period is very short. So you never can succeed. You only can go in a certain direction, in the good direction. And actually you have to think about the guy or woman who comes after you so that they continue in the right direction. So this is a process value like the same that we have to learn to fail and we have to accept that we make mistakes while we try to reach for these values. And yes, Martina, you said, elder men don't like it. Politicians don't like failure, but probably will need them to find the right solution. And then coming back to Marsha and to others also, also to you, Flip, I think, there's values for citizens. We should uh, look into it. Um, Space was a problem. Uh, bikeability, I wrote down. Accessibility in a city. Livability, health. All these values, the, the, the storytelling, I think it was mentioned, how you, how you talk about the value. Nobody understands 30% less of CO2, but we all understand I can bike with my uh, bike to my school. I don't have to park. I don't have to use the car, but it's very easy to access all the things by bike, for example, and thus uh, getting a lower CO2 um, uh, emissions. Um, I liked a lot also, maybe you remember, 
um, you have to involve the people to make them understandable these values and that's the strength of the UN SDGs we all understand them and if we don't make it understandable we will get this nice quote uh, we will not participate but we will be participated being participated yeah and that's a major difference and then uh, to come to the third and last part we have listened with the people who really work in practice and severine i really loved your uh, uh, toolbox and i understand it's all very new and i'm very excited that you shared this with us and immediately the comment from the municipality of amsterdam which is a cool municipality they say i want to integrate this so i think there you really made something happen here um, but looking also at what Neil said, um, they developed a dashboard for sustainability to map the ambition, to map the potential end, and here I am again, to monitor how you reach the value. And yes, he said, while well, we are a private company, we cannot enforce this. The projects that are run with this methodology, they are the diamonds, and some people go for diamonds, and some people, and I cannot translate this, I go for the but uh, maybe Paul, you can say what that is in English. So it's necessary to do these diamonds, it's necessary to do these lighthouse projects and to go through the efforts of uh, monitoring and uh, actually mapping ambition and potential. And then Severine, I think it's a pleasure to end with some stuff you uh, were telling us. Um, there is a toolbox, it's online. Um, it's general and it's detailed. You say there's a quick scan tool. Um, and you said there is theory, but at the same time, we have trainings. We do study trips with the people, developers, architects, stakeholders. We talk together. We get this. And then I'm here with you again, Flip. This same set of values which we would like to achieve. And I think this is really very promising. And since 2016, 15 of the projects have been monitored, you said with probably more than 200 uh, categories, uh, but uh, I think we should not be afraid about that. Because when I look at, I'm teaching at the Academy of Architecture and I'm teaching urbanism and architecture and I have young students and I go with Niels, what he says uh, from Arcadis. Uh, these people want to contribute. If I, I teach looking at the city as an ecosystem, this is a complex matter. And we don't know, we don't completely understand how it works. Biodiversity, oh my God, how can we increase it? It's really difficult. How, we, how can we increase quality of life? But these students want to know. They want to be excellent designers. They want to be stuff flip you like at the Federatie of Ruimtelijke Qualiteit. But they also want more. They want to contribute to a global system to minimize the impact uh, when I eat meat, I feel, I feel bad when I talk to them, basically, because they have a completely new vision. And I see you always smile, Alan Krita, when, there's, when we say, oh, these young people, they are consumers and not creators. And I'm not sure. I meet the creators as well. And I see you shake your head as well. So to come to a final conclusion, um, ladies and gentlemen, we saw a lot of inspirational uh, examples that it is possible to involve uh, sustainability agreements, international agreements in this new form of planning. Um, it is feasible. It's feasible to bring this thinking to the process. Yes, it's more complex. Yes, it's partly coming back from the 80s and was forgotten for 30 years. But we have better tools. We have uh, Google, we have other um, possibilities to do on our mobile phones. Maybe not me, I'm 48, but my students, they can. They can tell me about sustainability goals happening on their way. They know how many species of trees are standing along their bike path. And they didn't count themselves. They just held a, mic a telephone towards them and they got answers from that. So it's possible. This is an important step, I think, this fantastic conference uh, to really get it top of our minds again. And I would uh, really like to finish my small summary with uh, the marriage between research and policy can only be solved if design joins in. And to too little imag imagination uh, of how these agreements could actually come in practice and designers can help 
to visualize it. Knowing does not lead to acting. Design does. Thank you very much.